Your shirt doesn't look very Easter friendly. I got this when I was like 15 at Myrtle Beach. <laughs> oh. I don't know if that helps any or not. <laughs> it's a restaurant, folks. Hey everyone, happy Easter. Happy Easter! And welcome back to the After Hours channel. So in today's video, this is the first uh, part of our home building series. So yeah, we're gonna build a house right here. In the middle of a former bomb manufacturing plant. Yeah, so we are going to build a house here. This is Kayla and I's farm. It's also our farm where our grain bins are located at. If you don't follow our farming channel, uh, my family and I, we farm 3,500 acres. And my wife and I have been planning on building a house here for what, like five years probably? A good while. And um, now we're finally actually going to do it. Yeah. So we think we're still going through the long drawn out process of getting it started. But anyways, we've got a blueprint. Uh, a few weeks ago, we kind of flagged out where we're going to put it. Now, a little bit about this property, like I said, it was a bomb manufacturing plant for the U.S. Navy in WW2. It's part of a 700 acre complex they owned and leased. And it also conjoins to our family farm. So um, through the woods, we can drive right back to our family farm. All right, had a mild panic attack, had a runaway razor, but we got them back. Big Mama was bawling down the farm lane. Do you remember what we were talking about? I think we were talking about the property and how we got it. So we bought this in 2014. And when we bought it, we had no intentions of moving here. And this whole field, this 13 acres anyways, was a pine forest. Uh, the pine trees were all dying. We needed a lot of maintenance to maintain that stand. So we had them um, knocked out of here. I think this is the third or fourth crop we've raised here. Had we known that we were going to live here, we would have probably kept some of the trees, but oh well. But yeah, this is where we want it. We're, according to the power company, 3,000 feet off the road, or 3,200 feet off the road or something like that. So that's gonna be expensive, $12,000. The school is right there so we can make the kids walk to school. We are only about a mile from the school. And we can kind of see the grain bins right there, so. Uh, we'll probably leave that little little finger of woods there just for a windbreak. Maybe clean it up a little bit. It's kind of crummy. We basically just pushed pine stumps into the tree line there. And then back here we have a lot of site work to do. So we want to walk out basement. The only problem is there's nowhere that we have enough fall naturally to have the kind of basement we want with the house facing the direction we want. But we have a bulldozer and an excavator and dad likes playing and i think we can make it work so what we are going to do is build our house here um basically at the this road is kind of cut out we got about four or five feet of fall right here and then we are going to slope ground out away from the house to get the rest of it. that's our plan uh we're probably also going to push some of this dirt off because i don't want our backyard basically just to be a road kind of want to Grade this off a little bit, clear these trees out. Because then on the other side of these little trees, we have about an acre and a half, two acre yard, backyard. Right through here. So this is this this piece of dirt here has been anything from a food plot to a campground. Last year we had a camp out here a couple times during COVID. As you can see, the kids, big fans of playing back here. Lots of little trails to walk around, lots of lots of space. But we want to grade this to where we can see this from our, our back uh, back deck. You gotta move that um, building foundation. There is a building foundation. This goes back to this being an old bomb plant. There's a building foundation right there. So when this was the bomb plant, they put it in this road. And for whatever reason, they had a small loading dock right there. So we will tear that out. Hopefully that thing doesn't go into the ground too far, but it might, who knows. 
so yeah that'll that'll get out of here there's a lot of those around this property um, quite a few of them there's a lot of buildings here dad farmed this property in the 60s and back then most of the World War II buildings were still here now we own one of those buildings the building the the big concrete block building beside our grain bins that is one of the original buildings then the neighbors own the rest of them and they're pretty much all falling apart but yeah we gotta get that out of there anything that you want to add a house oh a house mm -hmm. let's whip out the floor plan here so we started looking at floor plans like two or shoot not not two like probably like 2015. sure you can't see anything Just, uh, Stand it in our shadow. Yeah. Now, one thing we like about it back here, it's just us. There's no neighbors. It's quiet, and we're far from the road. Another. I mean, we're not so far that it's hard to get to anywhere. And if it snowed three feet, we would still survive. But yeah, it's a really convenient location. But we're just like pushed in the back, so you can't see anything. Yeah. Like we're close to town, close to the school close to all the farms, but in our own little space. Yeah. Like I said, the only downfall is uh, the cost of getting utilities back here. So, so far the uh, electric is 12,000 and I haven't even talked to the water company yet. And that's with us putting it in the ground. So we are putting everything underground to get here, but it was, yeah, it was 12 grand from the electric company. Good old AEP. So here is our floor plan. So we have a pretty big open great room dining room and kitchen it's a 30 by 30 room with a vaulted ceiling I don't really remember what the pitch is but it's gonna be fairly tall in the center um, so you walk in it's like this big huge area yeah. with a big like a sight line all the way back to the porch which is also vaulted yes and then we have like double doors like so we can make an indoor outdoor space yeah so this is going to be a screened in porch with a fireplace on both sides yep and then you go down this hallway and we've got all the kids bedrooms their own oddly shaped bathroom here the washer dryer pantry this is just kind of a entryway like from jackets the, from oh. the garage yeah. then there's our basement and then here's our our bedroom and our bathroom we get our own closets which is my favorite brian can trash his side and i won't have to see it and we're doing something real cool here we're putting our bathtub in the shower we actually seen that in a hotel and we thought that was a great idea yes yeah, so when the kids splash water everywhere it doesn't ruin the flooring it's already in like a waterproof hold on hold on hold on they're going to be over here but the bathtub's going to be here mm. nah okay anyways <laughs> this is going to be the spot that's the spot i mean this is real cool too <laughs> now we are also going to have a full basement um, underneath of the house we're not doing any kind of bonus space above the garage because I just I don't think we're gonna need it between a 2900 square foot house and a 2900 square foot basement I don't think we're gonna need any space above the garage I say that and 10 years from now when we have this house filled we'll probably think ah we should have done that but I, right now it's not the plan I mean, we could still do it later in 10 years no it's different trusses oh, it is. Um, so yeah the footprint of the house the actual house part is 81 wide. So we got that up there, it's just upside down. And then we are 36 deep. Plus we have a 32 by 36 garage. Um, might have to make that big, I don't know. I need to measure my truck. I wanna be able to pull my crew cab long bed pickup in there and have plenty of space. But yeah, that's it so far. If you see anything that we didn't think of or that you think, man, you should probably do that different let us know one thing that might change also that right now this porch is 16 feet our builder brought up the point that if you make this 16 feet like we're planning on having big windows going up it he brought up the point that this this vaulted porch might start shading those windows so we might bring this back to 12 or 14 feet not sure so yet so we can get the view yeah of the kids just doing donuts in the backyard in the razor <laughs> yes. um 
things that there's like one or two things that I don't particularly like right now. Like I don't really like how the kids' rooms are just in a line, but it also makes the most sense. Do you want them to be in a triangle? Like not really. Well, this bathroom, I don't know about it, but it fits, and we had to do something with this space because we have an angled garage. So um, I don't know if that's going to be too tight. I don't know. I think it'll be fine. I asked Kayla if she wanted another bathroom, and she said. Oh. You and Dax pee on everything, yes. and I don't want to clean up an extra area of pee. She asked if I was cleaning it. <laughs> now this floor plan, this is actually two floor plans that we combined. Um, we had been looking at sites like Architectural Design and just Pinterest, and where else did we look? That's pretty much it, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. We found a few floor plans that were like, man, I kind of, we both like. We want the angled garage so that you can like. See, see the cars coming in. I like the angled garage. Yeah. Better than a side garage. Yeah. And then when we started looking at this house, or designing this in our mind, this bedroom. Yeah, this was pre Livia. Was not here. So this was pretty easy just to tack another room onto it. I believe the original floor plan we looked at that had this part of the house. So basically, this part and this part are from the same floor plan, and then this part was from a different floor plan. This was actually an in-law suite or something like that, I think. But uh, yeah, we made it work. So we have a local builder. He is the guy that built our hoop barn, our fertilizer barn. He's who's gonna build this for us. And uh, he's an Amish gentleman who also does floor uh, blueprint design and drawings. So this was all hand drawn. And then we took it to a printing company and had a laminated copy made. But yeah, think anything else? I mean, when we were designing this, we didn't, like, there were some things. He was like, mm, that's not nice. Let's fix it this way. Yeah. And I'm glad he did. Otherwise, like, he builds houses, so he knows those things. We wouldn't have thought of that. Right. That is a fact. Um, so, we don't claim to be experts at building a house by any means. But when we start talking with Ray, like I say, stuff like that, um, he was... He was basically catching what we were saying, like uh, everything went pretty smooth in the designing process, so that was good. Now, we started doing this process with Ray, or no, we were actually talking to a different builder then, last year, and then COVID happened, and we were like, meh, maybe we should wait. And then, our her sister built a house at the same time. Turns out we should just build the house because now the building prices have went up quite a bit. Uh, this house is gonna cost more than it would have last year, unfortunately. But there's hope because we vastly underestimated how much red tape there was involved in building a house. For example, in our county, there's not a lot of permits, but since we are more than 1,500 feet off of the road, we have to get our driveway approved. Or we have to get our, yeah, our driveway approved to a surveyed lot. So we're surveying off this ground, so we'll be separated from the main farm, and that costs some red tape. But... So that's going to take about an extra 30 days that we didn't see. And then there's um, getting the septic approved and all that stuff. And long story short, I'm guessing it's going to be Christmas before we're moved in or before we start. <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping to be in by Christmas. I know everyone probably says that, but I figured we'd be able to start building the house like into May, and that's looking more like into July. And our builder said, "Hey." Hopefully by then, prices have went down on materials, so maybe we'll get lucky. Probably not. But yeah, guys, that's it. That's This is the first video. Like I said, we're just, this is just an introductory to the project and what we have going on. Hopefully, stuff starts rolling here pretty soon, but I'm doubting that a lot happens between now and June. But thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel and don't follow our other channel, we are getting geared up for spring planning on the farm channel, so check that out, briansfarmviews.com or Brian's farming videos on YouTube. There we go. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.